What's going on everybody? Welcome back. In the last episode you've seen me finish assembling the short block in Project Mixed Up Boss. Today I'm mocking some things up to do some checking for intake manifolds. One of the things that I'm still kind of undecided on is which tunnel ram to use for this motor. You see, not all tunnel rams are created equal, just like not all dual plane manifolds are created equal, or single planes for that matter. So today we're going to talk about the intake manifold, and don't worry, this single plane right here is not staying. I just want to show that you can run a conventional Windsor intake on this setup. The only difference is, is how it's raised right here in the valley. You have a valley plate cover net, and then you have to run a distributor extension housing. But we'll get into all that later. So let's take a look at my manifold choices. All right, before I do anything with intake manifolds, I'm going to talk about something that I didn't do when I finished up the short block that I did when we first tore the short block apart. And that is measure the breakaway torque that is required to turn the crankshaft with the rings, pistons, and all of that. So let's do a little recap. If you'll remember, it had Molly forged pistons in it with a one millimeter, one millimeter, three millimeter ring pack. We switched out nothing but the pistons and ring package to a diamond piston, which is uncoated, and it has a 043, 043, three millimeter. So let's see just how much difference it takes in the amount of torque to rotate this motor over. All right. Do it real slow. If you remember in the other video, it was like 12.4. Looks like it's taking about 17 and a half foot pounds of torque to rotate this engine. So that just goes to show you the difference of having a coated versus non coated piston and having a, a thinner ring pack. Most of it can probably be attributed to the thinner ring pack, but irregardless, that's a pretty big difference. Before we dive into all of these different tunnel rams over here, I want to go back to the single plane Victor Jr. intake on this setup. As you can see, bolt holes line up perfectly. You know, and this is without a gasket, so it will change a little bit, but you can run this setup with no issues. But when you take the manifold off, that's when the real magic of these heads become apparent. One of the first things that I noticed when I opened the box on these cylinder heads and pulled them out was noticing the recessed cup here for the water crossover passages. That got my wheels turning. As normally this passage would come up flush here and it is what it is. But with this here, it tells me that Greg had the foresight to know that people would want to possibly run a dry intake manifold. And so guess what? So I went down to Belmont Automotive here local to me and picked up these expansion plugs. The diameter of this hole is 875 thousandths for those of you who may be wondering, but take and put some sealant on that, knock these plugs in, and you have an instant dry intake, which is really cool. Now, before people start saying, well, where's your thermostat housing gonna go? Well, hang on, I'm gonna tell you, it's pretty cool. Just like the original Boss 429s, I'm going to drill the front of the head, and even some people do it on putting Cleveland heads on Windsor blocks, but drill the whole of the head here and put fittings in and come up and have a remote thermostat housing located right here near the timing cover area. So that's going to help me maintain that old image of the Boss 429. Now, you may be saying, why do you want a dry intake? I'll tell you, it, the reasons are multiple, but 
first and foremost is when I'm putting something together, I'm looking for all of the things that's going to make it easy to work on down the road in case something was to happen. And since we're putting solid roller lifters in this motor, and I'm going to be driving it quite a bit on the street, by having the valley plate here, it's a two-piece design the way Greg made it. And so if I have a dry manifold here, I can yank the manifold off in about 10 minutes, take the cover plate off, access my lifters, put it back together, and be back on the road in no time. So to me, that's very important. Versus having to drain the coolant out, worry about coolant leaks when you put it all back together, it's just one of those little things that I want in this engine. So as you can see here on the table, I've got three different tunnel rams. But the thing about it is, they're not all created equal. This was the first tunnel ram that I had on the 393 Windsor. And as you can see, it is a 302 based tunnel ram that was designed in the 1960s. While there's nothing wrong with being designed in the 60s, you have to remember back then, they didn't, there was no aftermarket heads for the small block Ford. So this intake manifold had very small cross-sectional runners and when we put that 393 together my cylinder heads were flowing 315 cfm after we bolted this manifold up and flowed it with the manifold attached it dropped to 240 cfm and even after like 80 hours of grinding in the manifold the cross section was still too small as you can see just how thin we were getting right here to the edges and basically you couldn't make the port big enough to fit that head um on the flow bench even after the porting this manifold only flowed 275 to 280 max so you may be saying well, why did you run price motorsports adapter plates to start with i'll tell you why well, yes, Holly has the new high ram now. When I first set out to build the 393, Holly hadn't come out with a high ram yet. And I wanted a tunnel ram for that motor, and this was the only way to go about it. So we start the progress of grinding on this manifold and finishing up the engine. In the meantime, David and I picked up a 351 Windsor base uh, tunnel ram new holly high ram and when we got it we realized that the cross-sectional area of the runners were really large for the amount of power that we were trying to make for the 393 okay so when holly came out with the 8.2 deck high ram went ahead and got one of the bases and the cross-sectional size in this is about a half inch smaller compared to the 351 Windsor version of the same manifold. So this one was a lot more suited for the power level that we were trying to make, which is around 600 horsepower. As you can see where we had to grind and re-weld right here to make the distributor fit, it's not to do with anything that Holly done it's what we've done to make this manifold work on a, a 9.5 deck Windsor. Another reason why we chose this one is for the longer runners. What most people don't realize is the 8.2 deck version of the high ram has an additional half inch more of runner length compared to the 351 version. So when the idea came up for Project Mixed Up Boss here, I had visions of putting a Boss 302 tunnel ram on it. And you may be saying, wow, okay, why? Well, I knew that the adapter plates had already worked in the past, and I thought, well, it'd be cool to have parts of a Boss 302, the Boss 351 Ford Racing Block with the Boss 429 style heads. When I found that it had the recesses right here, that really got my wheels turning, like I said before. 
And the idea of running a dry intake manifold really sunk into me. Now, you may be thinking, well, how well does those Cleveland style 4V ports line up to the hammerhead ports? So let's take a look. All right, let's see here what kind of width we have. Hmm. Hmm. About 2.470 is what we'll call that. When you come over here to the 4V Cleveland, you can see that it's probably about an eighth of an inch on each side, give or take. And then, it's kind of hard doing this, holding a camera too. But anyways, so we're at 2.250. There you go. So how does that stack up? As you can see, the Cleveland is just a little bit bigger. So then enter the option that I don't have here on the table. The 351 Cleveland intake. Why do I want to run that? Well, for you Cleveland guys, you already know. It's already a dry intake manifold setup. And I will be able to make a, I'll have to run like a 3 8 thick spacer on each side. And I can tailor the height of the manifold to get it where the port alignment is going to be about ideal. I may have to go in and epoxy some of the runners to make it actually match up to this, which that'll be no problem. Another thing I like about the Cleveland tunnel rim versus the Boss 302 is you see how all four runners are clustered together here. If you look at a, a 351 Cleveland manifold, it's a completely different setup. It's actually more akin to what you see here. The plenum has a wider footprint and that will make the runners slightly shorter. And guess what that's going to do? It's going to give me the cross-sectional area, the length that I need to make that 750 horsepower that I'm wanting to make with this bad puppy. So, yeah, if anybody out there has got a 351 Cleveland tunnel ram laying around, hit me up because I need it. Till next time, this is Andy from Unity Motorsports Garage. Catch you later.